Good morning, or should I say wakey wakey, or better yet, cockerel doodle do. Johnny and I are back together for for take three, and it's <laughs> volume three, episode three, season three. Yes, another shit show. You ready, Johnny? I'm ready. Let's get ready to do this. Another one tour. <laughs> So, before we get started, Johnny, how are you, my friend? I've calmed down a bit after uh, after last night. Not a lot. I've got to be. I've got to be honest. Uh, sleepless nights, thinking about you know what was going to, uh, who we were going to link with uh, today, uh, who turned us down. We're, we're linked every minute with someone that turned us down. I'm just wondering if there's anyone left who might be interested in the job, and if you are, if you could contact Daniel. Uh, over the course of the week, rather than us contacting you and turning us down, if there is anyone in football right now who is interested in the job, give them a call. Mate, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually thinking of making. Maybe you can help me with this, Johnny. Of making like a a, a Premier League manager's Tinder, where you match the jobs <laughs> with the players, and when you get to Tottenham, you swipe left or right. They're like, right, no one's, right. no one's interested in that one. Get rid of that. It's, it's the easiest right. way to find out the managers, isn't it? Just have a t- just have a Premier League manager Tinder jobs. <laughs> so where even you just go through it during your time, and then like you can swipe left or right for Tottenham. And then when we do sack a manager within eighteen months, <laughs> they can just go through and go right. Would you mean eighteen months? It'd be lucky if they last. Listen, there's a lot of very very unhappy and depressed Spurs fans out there, and you know, attention all Spurs fans. Yeah, but I've you got, know, got if you're feeling like, low. Johnny, Johnny, before we do that, let me just say, because I want to build this up. You, you came to me. Johnny's doing something very, very good for the football fans of Tottenham. And he really wears his heart on his sleeve. So he's got an urgent appeal, an urgent helpline. Johnny, why don't you tell the people what, these, uh, what the helpline yeah, is? Yeah, attention, fellow Spurs fans. If you're feeling low after another shambolic performance, feel like you need to reach out, we can help you. I want you to call us now on 0800 one. 0101. Sorry, 0800 101010. That is 0800 1 nothing, 1 nothing, 1 nothing. That is our club. We need change now because yep. this this has gone this has gone on too long. We can't have any more managers. The fans have had enough. We're all sitting there waiting for our um our season ticket renewals to come in. With a big increase, and I think it's going to tip 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 us over the edge, especially after last night's debacle. That 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 that's the email. Do you know what they're probably thinking? All right, let's just get a win. Let's just get positive. We've gone third. We can send it off tomorrow. If we can do this, listen. The season is coming up. They are running out of time. This email is coming. It's just how badly. I mean, the, the the premium seats have had theirs already. And um, this is the first time, actually, that I've seen would be the premium seats and the sort of the West stand, the West upper, start to be a little bit vocal. This is the yep. first time that I can remember. They pay a lot of money for their seats. They run big businesses. They go there. They see the game. They get pissed off. They go home and go to work. There are the other fans who it's a huge part of their wages that they put aside to come to yep. the to the ground, and they're not going to just accept that. They expect more. I expect more. Yep. Um, I want to be entertained, but most of all, I can take defeat because defeat's part of football. But yep. I want to see defeat with heart and passion and playing for that badge. Last night we saw none of it again. Let, well, well, let's get into this because we've spoken about it. You, who have been very vocal with Conte and everything, and. Uh, we all thought, and people were thinking, oh, now it's Stellini. Uh, he can change the formation. It's his show. <laughs> he can he can put his stamp of approval, his blueprint, his philosophy, his everything. And what did we get? Conte to our version new... 2.0, yeah. Contellini is our new manager because <laughs> as soon as that came out and you saw a two-man midfield and a five at the back and, and how jam-packed Everton's midfield were, you knew what was coming, and it was a complete rinse and repeat, even with the substitutes late. It was just awful, wasn't it? 
I just, I, I just fail to understand. You know, when I saw the team sheet, they're a very physical team. And to see Skip and Hoiberg in the middle of the park against uh, Anana and um, uh, Iwobi and uh, it just like that midfield was just so powerful. I thought the two man midfield cannot last 90 minutes. I just did not expect what I saw last night. That that last 20 minutes, I mean, the, the, the vicious eye gouging. I mean, I love Harry, but <laughs> that was that was pathetic. rather that was straight out of Rada. That was, I mean, yeah. we went to the ground, got sent off. We as Spurs fans would have been pissed off if that had happened to us, but it happened. Then we get the penalty. Spurs fans thinking, here we go. No, no, not this season. Not this season. No, because what we witnessed was one of the worst things I think I've seen. I think this is almost worse than Sheffield United. To spend the last 20 minutes defending on the on the edge of our box, yep. inviting them on to score. Our, our stats, we had 20% possession, 20%. In that last 20 minutes against 10 men. And I think if it had gone on for another three or four minutes, they probably would have won it. Yep, exactly what I thought, Johnny. Exactly what I thought. I mean, you look at it, like you said, one nil down. Sorry, one nil up. 10 men against the team. Mate, you got to look at it. Southampton, bottom of the league. Can't literally... Couldn't buy three a goal. One up. Three one up. Two goals up. Can't do it. And I know... You and me are very different with what we thought about Conte. Was it the right place to do it? Was it the right time? One game later, and he has been shown to be absolutely bang on the money with what he said regarding the players. Because what they did again, now you know, Everton is a very, very hostile crowd. Especially with what they've got going on right now. 100%. And they acted like that. I mean... Lucas Mora, Sanchez. What are these two players doing to warrant getting on the pitch? I mean, you look at someone like Keane last night for Everton. Yep. You know, he, he gives away the penalty. Yep. He He's involved in everything. He got tackled by Mora. And it's amazing he even got up after that tackle. Yeah. It was a terrible tackle. Horrific. Right? And he was still driving them forward. And he had the heart to bang that shot in. It was a fantastic goal. But they played with heart and passion. Sean yep. Dyche has got them believing, right? Yep. Because they are, they are. if you took man for man, there's no way anyone, uh, no Spurs fan is going to tell me that they've got better squad than, than we have. But they played with a ton more heart and passion than we ever did. And uh, it, was, it was embarrassing. And the excuses afterwards, I mean, I've got to read you one here um, about Dan Juma because we're all wondering... Why Dan Juma wasn't shown minutes. Mora's leaving. I'll always fondly think of Mora after the Ajax game. He'll always have a place in my heart after that game. But last night was tailor-made for Dan Juma to come on. I think Sar as well. So we haven't seen him. Christian Cellini says about on at Dan Juma after the game. Dan Juma is one player we obviously have three important players up front and today we used Lucas and then we had 10 players after the red card we couldn't change. Dan Juma is a good player, his effort is fine, we are happy with him could have fooled me. He just needs to wait for his time. How much longer is he going to have to wait? Uh, because He's got nine games. In our squad it's not easy to play in the front three why not? They're all shit at the moment uh, Son I mean, well it's not easy to replace Son <laughs> OK, it's not easy for him. We understand him, but we are happy. It's a shame he's not fucking happy. How can he be happy? He must really regret when he was sat on there last night. How did I get off the bus to Everton? Yep. I, I, said this, up Spurs. I could have been playing every week. I could have been a hero at this club. This is a guy yep. that was in the Champions League semi-finals. This is a guy that scored six or seven goals in the Champions League. Knockout stages and group stages last season. Not good enough for us. We've got to bring on Mora. Okay? That's how we are. That's how we are. This is a comedy club. <laughs> Johnny, you, you, you go on like that. you got to remember as well. <laughs> Dan Juma can play on the left. Lucas plays on the right. 
but we bring more. Yeah, but you've got to leave Son on, man. I I I sent a tweet out during the game. I feel it's time that we should bring Son on, right? After about 25, 28 minutes, the tweet got traction and people were messaging me, he is on the pitch, isn't he? And I thought, yeah, that's the point of the, that is the joke, right? Can we please bring on Son? Because he was absent. And so you can imagine my shock that he was still on that pitch. Bring on Dan Juma, give them something to worry about. We should. I felt we should have played possession football, kept the ball, stretch them and then try to catch them on the break when they tried to come full for the goal. Listen, I'm not a manager, but that was shocking last night. You yeah, well, I mean, John, John, you know, what, what, what I'll add to that as well is, uh, first of all, when we talk about Everton playing with heart, playing with soul, playing with passion, playing with desire, we have to remember the pressure they have on themselves right now about relegation via uh, the Premier League position, let yeah. alone FFP. That club is falling to pieces, like literally financially, where we're light years ahead of them. Light years in that respect. Um, and they come and do this. Then you look at that humour. This is the bit that makes me laugh. Like you said, he came here because it's Tottenham Hotspur. He must be sitting there thinking, right, they're getting done for, for FFP. They might be getting relegated on two fronts. I've come to this club. Got they don't even know their stadium's going to be done. Yeah, I've got out of two cups. The manager's gone. The director of football's corrupt. And I scored on my debut. The team can't attack, but I can't get on the pitch. <laughs> you know what the problem is for me? Daniel Levy has created the Four Seasons Country Club, which is Hotspur Way. Okay? They come yep. in here. They, they come in in the morning. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? Can I clean your boots? Would you like a coffee, Eric? Okay. Eric, come on down here. We'll give you a little massage, mate. A little massage, a little massage. Eric, what would you like for lunch? Uh, have you got any dry cleaning for me, Eric? Right? Okay. Have a little train out, a little walk, you know, a bit of moan. The weather's not so good. Eric, you coming for a swim? Okay, yeah, maybe a sauna. Okay, what's the time? One o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna go home now. I need to have a I need to have a, I need to have a relax. No, don't bother. We've got a little hotel here, the the lodge hotel. Why don't you why don't you have a rest here because you must be exhausted after that. that's what we've got it's too comfortable you've got players who should have lost left seven years ago staying at the four seasons country club on a hundred grand a year would you leave i'd no. a week you'd have to do i mean you i'd like to stay there for a week they've been there for nine years eight years eight years some of them i mean yeah, really mate. yeah 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 bang on this this is the thing and it just goes to show that this keeps happening. Now, you mentioned Dan Juma. I said to you I didn't want to talk about Larice, but you brought up the interview. Did you hear Larice's interview on Tottenham Hotspur? I, I've got to be honest with you. I uh, I went and had a cold shower. Uh, uh, did, did they have hot, hot water at the uh, country club you were at? No, no. Not not at my country. Not at my country club. No, afraid not. So, Hugo Larice's very first words, <laughs> very first words, that came out on his Tottenham Hotspur TV press conference. Come on. <laughs> was, yeah, it's a, t a tough place, this place. But we, we have to take positives. And there were lots of positives to take from this game. What were they? <laughs> Hugo Lloris, I swear to God. The stadium for 10 lights years, didn't go out. That's for, 10 years, for 10 years, he said the same thing. He said we got to learn as well. I mean, have you seen that movie? I keep mentioning Spurs of Billy Madison. Have you seen that uh, Adam Sandler movie? We're, yeah, it's a long time, a long time ago. We're Billy Madison. We just don't, we don't learn. We just keep repeating the same year. But for Hugo Lloris to come out and say, we have to take the positives from the game. There were a lot of them. They are Hugo's own words for Batum. I do feel sorry, you know, I do feel sorry for, in some ways, you know, for Stellini because, you know, What's happened is, you know, we've got this ship that's lost its rudder, and they've they've taken um, they've taken Conte off the ship, and they've left the, the shoe polisher in charge of the ship. He ain't got a clue where to go, and he's trying to steer the ship. Unfortunately, it's drifting towards the rocks, and we're going to sink. And there's yep. no, nothing anyone can do about it right now. I mean, what's going to happen? What's going to happen on Saturday? Should we get mauled 
by Brighton, which which is entirely possible. And I, I, I'm hearing some fans are actually hoping it is, that's exactly what happens. What's going to happen? Is he going to sack Stellini and uh, Mason? We could be, we could be, by the time we get to Man United, we could have Daniel Levy and Donna Cullen, right? Like in, in the so, so let's There's look no at what we, we say this. Listen, uh, uh, this is finished. The, the game is finished. Brighton have won their game in hand. Brighton are currently six points behind us with two games in hand. And when they beat us? Three points, two games in hand. Yeah. And, uh, I've got to the point, like I've said, I've said many for for many a time, uh, Johnny, and you know this. I don't care about the results. I simply don't care um, where we finish this season. If Brighton beat us, fair play to them. Don't care. The only thing I care about is the reaction we have to it as a fan base. What are fans? You know, the thing is, fans are very vocal on Twitter, but that's where it, that's where it yeah. seems to end. Um, you know, I got a feeling against Brighton on, on the weekend there. Um, we'll have many tourists um, visiting the stadium. And when they start getting vocal or singing whatever the song there is, they, they'll be bamboos or they won't know what it's all about. It's not their fault. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with tourists. If I was ever in Spain, I wanted to go to Madrid. I'd also want to go and see a game. I've got nothing yep. against it. But um, I just, it's all very well being upset and angry, but you've got to do something about it, you know? I think the way we look at this, Johnny, if we were still at White Hart Lane, Levy out would be fucking out of control. More than, I, I reckon, a large majority of that 36,500, whatever it used to be, will be singing what needs to be sung, don't you think? I mean, listen, look, the atmosphere on those nights, for me as a kid... Growing up and, you know, European nights at the lane were absolutely magical. And, you know, I think that last season under Poch at the lane oh. was one of the best memories. I mean, I cried that final game against Man United. I was in the East Stand, uh, bang on the halfway line. And it was one of the most emotional football uh, days that I can remember. It was, it was truly emotional. And I don't feel that connection. It's yep. an amazing stadium. You you cannot deny how Correct. fantastic it is. But I don't have an emotional attachment to this place at all. It's big, it's shiny, it's magnificent. But for me, my heart belongs in White Hart Lane. Yep. Yep. I'm... And it's soulless to me at the moment. You know, he didn't put the fans in the right place. He should have got all the singing section. You know, this isn't the, you know, the Dortmund wall. This isn't, yep. you know, this isn't, you know, Anfield, it's, yes, it's, it's, it's missing its heart. And there's only one man to blame for a lot of that. It is. And as you mentioned that man, we're going to switch subjects and I'm going to quickly just bring up a photo because they are going ahead again. I will be standing there with the people that I stand with week in, week out to, to try and have always been doing this. I'm just trying to find the uh, image of it now. Here it is. So, once again, myself and many others will be outside, or opposite, shall I say, the training ground from 11am. Now, 11am, we say, because we put the banners up, um, there'll be Boogie, there'll be Ryan Isaacs, there'll be Graham, there'll be uh, Andrew Cooper, there'll be Dell. There'll, there'll be a good fair few of us that, that get Billy Carnes, that get all uh, that stuff ready. But we say 11 because we know it's a three o'clock kickoff. And if we say, yeah, get there for 12 one, people will get there for two off two. And it's like, well, so we're going to be there once again. Now, so many people are putting polls up. Are you Enoch in, Enoch out? Hundreds in some, thousands in others are going Enoch out, Enoch out, Enoch out by a landslide. But when it comes to it, they're not there now. The last one we did, and I saw you briefly at it, Johnny, didn't I? Because I had to uh, go to We Are Tottenham TV, was the Notts Forest game. You were on Tottenham TV. Uh, I yeah. just caught the end. I yeah. caught the end. I'm a late arrival on uh, on, on Saturday. So, so I'm not sure what time I, I will arrive, but I'm a late no, arrival. But, but this is the thing. We will be there. People have said to us, do this at a home game. Now, 
since that Forest game, it has been the Conte. Uh, this is our first game since Conte's uh, statement or statement, sorry, press conference. The sacking, Paratici's <laughs> corruption, <laughs> the performance at Everton, season ticket prices will be going up. Uh, uh, premium seats already have. Top four is seriously, I mean, I don't think we're getting it in a million years anyway, uh, is up for, is in serious jeopardy. Um, mm. And as I said to you, Johnny, I, I could just... No I'm women's pitching. football manager. No oh, yeah, no women's football, football manager. No manager. As, as, as I said, I've... I, I've Thank God we got the guy that mows the grass. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, because what a wonderful job he does for them to play on that yeah. carpet. But like I said, I, it's getting to the point now where... I, I could just picture Daniel Levy having his dinner date with the Champions League trophy. Um, and then the Champions League trophy just gets up and starts walking off. And you can just hear James Blunt going, goodbye, my lover. <laughs> goodbye, my friend. Um, you, you you can see it coming. So if you're going to, if you want change, if you need, or you're going to the game and you have been saying you are Levy out, please, please come and stand with us. Because this is going to get a lot, lot worse before it gets better, unless fans stand together that say they're Levy out and are at the ground. Please come and join us, uh, Johnny. What have you got to say to that? I, listen, I, I, I think what he's done off field is remarkable. I will um, join you with that. Uh, you know he, what he's done off field is remarkable. Unfortunately, you know after twenty two years of training, he still doesn't understand the football business, obviously. Leave yep. football people to do football business. Appoint a football CEO, like a Paul Barber. Bring them to the club. Do what you do best. Make money for the club to reinvest. Get all the off-field money, plough it back into the club, and let's make our club great again. Yep. That's what I, I want. I, I literally could not say that better myself sir as i said i'm gonna put the picture up one more time 11 o'clock usual place opposite the club shop for the brighton game we will be there please make sure you are johnny thank you very much as always brother pleasure as always thanks for having me on yeah and everyone like i said john if i get rid of this banner i just want to say um johnny's twitter is right there. Is right. There you go, Johnny. You, you got to get used to the camera. You got to go the opposite way. So left is right, <laughs> right is left. Yeah. Um, back to front, a bit like our team. Exactly. Exactly, mate. Listen, he's the king of the spaces. He is the space dealer for me. He's got me hooked. Um, we actually left the space to come and do this, to go back into a space. Um, yeah, no doubt we'll be back. No yeah, doubt. Yeah, so Johnny's going to be with me at least once a week doing these. Uh, because what time is it really... now, actually? It's half past ten. Yeah. It's or half to past... you, half past eight in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's half past eight. We're going to do this. We're going to do this every single week. Uh, don't know what day, including the summer, because I have a lot of fun doing this with Johnny. And, and no doubt we'll be linked with players and managers we've got, we're never going to sign, which is a great sport. Okay. Well, Johnny, Johnny, every, every time we've done this, something's happened a few hours after. Yeah, I don't so, think there's uh, anything left now. I don't think there's I, much I think left we're becoming like when Aaron Ramsey scores a goal. If you and me do something, <laughs> if something happens now, it's can I just say who hasn't scored for Brighton in five years? Is it when was it? Has Lalana scored recently? Probably has. Um, he scored this season. Yeah, he has. Just look up um, and see. I'm sure Doctor Tottenham. Right, will... The goalkeeper. The goalkeeper will do a Paul Robinson <laughs> against Watford. Although I think we could have Larice Flapianski again. That's probably on the card. <laughs> Oh dear! That I is just, the best let's, one. Let's, let's, let's just hope it goes well on the weekend. That but, is um, the best one I've ever heard. Hugo I, I do Anthony. love, I do love my club, uh, but this is too much for us all. Hugo Thanks Flappy very Anthony. much, guys. Thanks very much, Brian. Yeah, my my absolute pleasure. Oh, like I say, Hugo Flaviansky is brilliant. Everyone, <laughs> put your comments in. Let us know what you thought of the, uh, of what we've had to discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and as always, Levy. Out. Cheers, man.